uh, pick up where you left off, Chairman, but I um, have to say organismal goop is one of the best phrases I've heard recently. So thank you for that, Dr. Rockman. So you were talking about fish in freshwater lakes and how all have detectable levels of microplastics, not just in their guts, but in the actual flesh of the fish that people would consume. All. That's right. Yeah. So when I moved to Toronto and started doing work in the Great Lakes, I was shocked that every fish that we sampled had microplastic in it, sometimes up to 900 pieces in an individual organism. I'd never seen anything like that before. In the middle of the ocean, it was one in four fish. In the middle of the ocean, one in four fish. So it's in the oceans as well, but to a lesser degree. I think because it's more dilute. So if you think about the ocean, you have microplastic okay. coming off the land. It's a vast environment. The Great Lakes, while huge, are less dilute. Yeah. Uh, shellfish? We see microplastics in shellfish. That includes oysters and mussels and shrimp and all kinds of animals that we like to eat. In um, what, how, how, what, what is the reach? Is it 100% like the lake fish? 25% like the ocean fish. Do you so have a guesstimate on how yeah. much of the shellfish population has uh, plastic in it? So I think it would be fair to say that if I were to go out and sample every species of shellfish in the ocean, that I would find microplastic in every species of shellfish in the ocean. Would I find it in every organism? Maybe not. Um, but microplastic, because it transports in air and rains down in remote places, it's transporting in the global dust cycle. It truly has become ubiquitous, similar to perfluorinated compounds. And so, yes, I think it, if you're eating seafood or other things, you, you can expect to be eating microplastic, but it's in the dust in this room, so it's also likely in my cup of water. Seabirds? Absolutely. I teach a marine ecology class, and this year we decided to dissect seabirds as one of our labs, and uh, we found microplastic in quite strikingly large pieces in 90% of the birds uh, that we were looking in. We've, I think many of us have seen the horrible pictures of the albatross and other seabirds on Midway Island, which in their feeding pick up fairly large bits of plastic, discarded plastic lighters and things like that and then are unable to fill their tummies with edible food because they're already stuffed with plastic. So with stuffed bellies, they starve to death, and their bodies are lying on the soil of Midway Island, and as they open up, as the flesh degrades away, you see the skeletons with these little pockets of plastic where the stomach was. That's right. And a lot of those organisms are chicks because the, the right. parents are feeding them. that to their young. And so for a for population perspective, you need those to grow up and reproduce to sustain a population. And in addition to that horrible scene of what's trapped in the chicks' stomachs, it's also cleared the gut and has gotten into their flesh as well at the microplastics level. So I've never looked in the fillet of a, or the muscle of a bird to see whether you see translocation. But for example, there's papers that show microplastic in the blood of humans. And I think somebody mentioned breast milk. And so the I idea did. that these small pieces are translocating should be organism wide based on our biology. Yeah. And to be a little bit uh, blunt, but thorough, the baby not only ingests the microplastics through breast milk, but it appears in baby diapers as well. So it's pretty well throughout. Uh, last question, mammals. Human mammals or marine mammals? Start with marine mammals and uh, non-human yeah. terrestrial mammals. We understand that um, marine mammals, whales, dolphins, um, sea lions, they certainly have microplastic in their stomach. They're eating it. I think of more concern is the large you know, you find whales washing up on the beach with bellies full of plastic bags, and there's no doubt from a necropsy that that is what caused that mortality or the death in that animal. Um, entanglement is another thing. So when it comes to entanglement and ingestion of large plastic, absolutely it's a Entang problem for marine mammals. Entanglement pretty much means drowning, doesn't entanglement it? Entanglement can cause a laceration, like actually a cut on the body. It can also lead to drowning. It can cause an organism to be stuck and not escape a predator. So it's basically like an organism kind of 
being unable to operate as it normally would if it's covered yeah. in a net. Well, it's a sort of um, peripheral point, but um, anybody who's ever had a loved one who has gone through um, any kind of digestive blockage and is familiar with what an extraordinarily painful experience that is for a human, um, I suspect that for the whales that die because they have filled their stomachs with waste plastic that we have not bothered to take proper care of as humans, um, it's a mighty painful way to die. Thank you.